I built a custom macro pad from scratch, starting with schematics to PCB, assembly, and code. Here's how I did it. To design the PCB, I'm using KiCad just because I have more experience in it than other design softwares like Altium or EasyEDA. For the schematic view, you can see a 3x3 matrix with another switch on its own, and my initial thought was to use this switch for toggling between layers. Keyboards use a matrix setup because it reduces the number of GPIO pins required to account for all key presses. In this example, only 6 pins are needed for the 3x3 matrix, so at least 3 columns and 3 rows. If each switch were to be connected to its own GPIO pin, we would need at least 9 available pins. We also need diodes for each switch, as you can see here, to avoid ghosting when multiple keys are pressed. If you want to learn more about why diodes are necessary, you can search up N-key rollover and anti-ghosting on keyboards. I'm using an RP2040 Zero because it's small and has enough GPIO pins, even for my next keyboard build, which has 47 keys. Next, we'll move on to the PCB editor. The PCB is dual layer and I've arranged the keys into a matrix. I also added some mount holes for M2 screws. You can see them in the corners and also the middle of the board. For the components and its footprints like key switches and diodes, I will list the GitHub repository that I downloaded to use for this project. The red layer is my top layer, which you can see here, and the blue layer is the bottom. Before exporting the files and getting your PCB manufactured, it's always a good idea to run the design rules checker up here. And here it shows zero errors and zero warnings. Next, you can also see the PCB in a 3D viewer. When everything looks good, it's time to export your PCB into Gerber and drill files. These are the two necessary files that you need. I will also export a stat file, which will be used as reference when 3D modeling my case. Alright, I got my PCB from JLC PCB, and it looks pretty clean, so we can start mounting some components. First, I'll solder one hot swap socket and its diode just to test one connection. I'll be using flux to remove oxidation and make it easier for solder to bond to the contacts. This was the first time I ever designed anything keyboard related, and I'm pretty happy with the end result. I didn't run into any huge issues, only a loose connection, which was fixed by adding more solder. I've attached a motor to the switch just to test if it actually works and if the traces are properly connected. Looks like everything's working properly, so we'll solder the rest. Now that all the diodes and hot swap sockets are soldered on, we'll move on to the microcontroller. I'll be using the Aco Creamy Yellows for this project. They are a linear switch and they come in a pack of 45, which is way more than I need. Let's talk about the total cost of this project. The most expensive components were the switches and keycaps. I bought a set of ortholinear keycaps for roughly $30, paired with switches I got on sale for $15. Surprisingly, 5 PCBs only costed 5 bucks, which included shipping costs, so it was basically a dollar each. I would recommend buying the diodes and hot swap sockets from AliExpress instead of Amazon for a better price, but I did pay extra so I could get the components the next day. The RP2040 only cost like $5 a piece. In total, I spent about $80 when I could buy a fully built macro pad for $20, but where's the fun in that? Alright, let's see how it sounds so far.
Now that we're done with the general assembly, it's time to test it out with some code. All right, I have my macro pad here after running some code and you can see the green LED. This means that this is the uh, numpad. So we can write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then if we press the toggle button, it toggles to the macros. So just a quick note, we can do testing my macro pad and then every click, it writes the whole string. And there we go. We can program it to do whatever it wants. We can switch back to the numpad. And there we go. Okay, let's quickly run through the code. It's pretty simple. We have three libraries that we have to include, the Arduino, keyboard, and the NeoPixel, which is for the LED. So first we define a pin for the LED, which is 16 on the RP2040-0. We have to initialize our rows and columns, which we have three of, and the column pins are three, four, five. The row pins are six, seven, eight. This is a bit different from my original schematic. And we have a layer. We initialize it as a Boolean. So true equals the numpad layer. And if it's false, then it's a macros layer. And we'll get into that a bit later. And then lastly, we have toggle in and toggle out, which is my toggle switch for the numpad layer i went with the numbers one to nine and for the macros i did testing my macro pad in the setup we want to initialize all the column pins to output low and we also want to initialize all the row pins to input pull down we want to do the same thing to the toggle pin and always have the toggle pin as high we can also set up the neo pixel right here and then begin the keyboard for our loop we first check our layer to see if it's green for numpad or purple for macros and also shows the LED. In the for loop, we iterate through each column, setting each one high at a time. And then we check which row is high and it'll determine which key is pressed. If it's a numpad layer, then it will output numbers one to nine, else it will output the macros mapping. And then we just have a delay for the debounce. However, we can have a better working debounce, but it would be more complicated. Lastly, we want to set the column back to low. And then this if statement is to switch layers if the toggle button is pressed. And that's basically the whole code. In the next video, I'll be designing and 3D printing the case and tweaking the acoustics. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I'll catch you in the next one.